So you mentioned intermittent fasting. That's one thing I want to talk to you about as far as specifically with uh, related to brain performance. It's something that I noticed back when I was probably reading your stuff on, on fasting back several years ago. And I started playing around with it and noticed that my test scores in undergrad uh, were definitely improved. I had much more mental clarity uh, when I did intermittent <laughs> fasting. Okay. <laughs> Do you know how happy you're making me? Like I was such a crappy student. I barely graduated because my like my brain wouldn't do what I wanted to. I'm I'm plenty smart, but if I don't point my brain in the right direction, have the right fuel, I'm kind of a zombie. I didn't figure any of this stuff out till I was over 30. So the fact that you could intermittent fast and get better test scores, you just made my day. Like that's awesome. No, seriously, I I, I noticed a huge difference as yeah. far as just like I wouldn't be reaching for words. I would be I would just be completely crisp and clear. I want to hear what is going on in the brain when we're intermittent fasting or when we're doing a prolonged fast, if you could break that down, like okay. what, what is, what is actually causing these, these mental improvements? Um, I talk about a good amount of this in my new fasting book, fast this way. And the first thing that's happening is that you have X amount of electrons available in your body at any one time. And your body makes electrons by combining 30 pounds of air and food and then breaking it down and then eventually extracting energy from it. Well, you spend a meaningful portion of your available electrons breaking down food to get more electrons. If there's no food in your stomach, all of those electrons become available for thinking or for fixing your body. And that's a pretty cool deal. The second thing that happens during a fast, during a longer fast, you go into ketosis. During a shorter fast, your ketones actually will rise, but not enough to get into full grade clinical ketosis. If you do a bulletproof fast, the way I've been talking about for a while, um, you actually get more ketones and ketones provide more energy than carbs do. And the neurons in your brain love ketones. They'll actually use ketones even if glucose is present. So that's a preferred fuel for them. And if you're doing a prolonged fast, another thing happens for mental clarity, which is when um, we don't have food for a while, your body opens up your, I'm going to call it your sensing network to help you find food better. So you become more environmentally aware, you become more perceptive, you hear things better, things are sharper, you see better colors. Uh, and if you go walk in a forest, you feel the forest better, you're actually more connected to the world around you. And it's a pretty neat state to do, but that's going to take a couple of days of fasting. And intermittent fast, though, it's because you're not distracting yourself with all the energy going into food. A secondary thing is that all foods have three things in them. They have an amount of energy, it's called calories. Calories are not bad for you. They're actually what you use to make electrons. They're useful. <laughs> That's why eating food that has no calories in it is gonna probably not make you feel good. The second thing is it has nutrients. The third thing it has that most nutritional science seems to forget about is it has toxins and anti-nutrients. No food is free, all foods are a mix of those three things. But if you're eating things that are full of toxins, and a lot of us are doing that either in, for convenience or just because we're not well trained on thinking about that, then it lowers mitochondrial function. And then we have less energy in our brain. And then our body says, I'm using all available blood sugar to oxidize these toxins to, to deal with what you just stuck in my gut. So you don't have enough blood sugar for the brain. So you actually make a decision in the body around longevity, around protecting the system. It says, oh, I'm willing to shave a couple IQ points off. It doesn't matter. And this is why you get a sugar craving after you eat a lot of meals. It's because you ate the wrong stuff. Regarding these longer fasts, so I'll just tell you my experience. I've tried a few three-day fasts. And most of my experiences on the third day, I've experienced just like incredible mental clarity as if I'm just like, buzzing on caffeine all day and just so sharp is that a common experience do you yeah. uh it's i know you, you talked you talked some in your book about sort of spiritual experiences um, as a result of these longer fasts tell me about kind of the connection there well that's why every major tradition and lineage has fasting as a part of it um, including most of the christian stuff if you look back um, there's always periods of fasting in the Bible and you look in Hindu, Buddhist, Islam, it, it's always there uh, as well as more of the traditional stuff like shamanic training and all. It's, it's just a fundamental thing. It's because on that third day you get a massive boost of energy 
and you get that open connection to the world around you. And what I wrote fast this way for was to point out, look, I did a four day fast in a cave, a vision quest, and that's the backdrop for the book. There is such a thing as a spiritual fast, but there's also such a thing as a working fast, which is when I wanted to study. I wanted to get my work done. I have kids running around the house and I'm trying to stay focused to try and do a water only spiritual fast, which requires rest, reflection, journaling, meditation, breathing, all the stuff you do when you're on a path. That's a different skill, but fasting can turn on that energy. You might also say, I want to turn on my energy to do life with fasting and understanding that they're different and that it's okay to say, I'm going to do an intermittent fast today. I'm going to do all of the things that I am allowed to do that give me energy during my fast so I can feel more like my third day, even though it's just a morning without breakfast. That's basically what I'm teaching in Fast This Way.